That's right, you read the title correctly. Today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so, so much for watching again. I really, really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and also hit subscribe. Uh, really, really appreciate all the new subscriptions we've gotten. So, so very helpful to the channel. And if you could leave a comment too, that would be fantastic. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we're about to talk about today. So artificial intelligence has been gaining a huge amount of popularity in the past couple of years. And so I figured it's probably time that I start looking into artificial intelligence, what it can do, what it takes to actually write the code, and at least start down that several years journey of actually learning how to write that kind of code since it's becoming even more prevalent in the industry that I'd like to continue working in. So today we're going to be talking about a very specific piece of artificial intelligence coming from a company that we're about to talk about in just a second. First, I'd like to talk just briefly about some of the fields that have developed because of the growing popularity and development of artificial intelligence. So a few of the fields include machine learning, um, neural networks, and also something called computer vision, which is what we're going to be doing a lot of, or at least talking about a lot of today in today's video. So computer vision is a very, very broad term, but essentially it basically means uh, developing a way for computers to see the world as we do and to gain input uh, from different things in the world. So computer vision is the way that computers view the world. It's the vision of a computer um, into our world. So trying to teach computers how to draw things, uh, aspects from our modern world, that's a big part of it, but also um, getting a little bit more in detailed about uh, the world and maybe picking up on things that we don't see, um, such as identifying people in pictures or identifying emotions that are hard on a mass, you know, a large, large scale that would take humans a long time to do. Computer vision allows us to do that much, much faster. There's a lot more to this topic, so I highly encourage you, if you're interested in that, definitely look up the term computer vision um, and, and look into it just a little bit farther just uh, because there's so much more in that computer vision category that I, I didn't talk about. So the device that we're going to be talking about today was created by a company called OpenCV and that stands for Open Computer Vision. So the uh, whole company is kind of devoted to this um, uh, computer vision uh, idea. So OpenCV has actually been around for 20 years and they produce a whole uh, a genre of, of tools and, and software and now hardware um, for open uh, computer vision technology. So a lot of what they do, obviously in the name, it's open source, so you can look at their source code, and they're very open about how they accomplish a lot of these things. They're very popular for a Python library, um, that gives you computer vision capabilities in the Python programming language. So that's pretty much what they're most well known for, um, especially with Raspberry Pi projects. But now they're kind of dipping into the artificial intelligence world and they're developing their own boards and their own cameras to um, expand and extend that functionality through their own hardware. On July 14th, 2020, OpenCV launched a Kickstarter for a new line of products that they're titling the OAK. And OAK is an acronym, O-A-K, which uh, stands for OpenCV AI Kit. And so they have two variants of this OAK device. There's the OAK 1 model, which um, is a lot cheaper than the uh, second model, which is the OAK D, and the D stands for depth. So the Oak One has a single camera. We're gonna get more into the specs a little bit later, but the Oak One has a single camera. It's a lot cheaper, a little bit smaller. Um, and the Oak D has actually three cameras, one RGB uh, camera and two uh, mono cameras on the, on the sides, opposite sides of that uh, single camera in the middle. And it's obviously a little bit bigger to accommodate those three cameras. So we're not gonna be talking a lot about the Oak D just because I, I don't have an Oak D. What I have is the Oak One. And so we're gonna be focusing in this video mainly on the Oak One. So I decided to go with the Oak One model um, for a couple of reasons, mainly <laughs> the price was a big factor, uh, but also, you know, I'm brand new to this artificial intelligence um, uh, computer vision 
world. So I was like, oh, I don't want a spring for something that's super, super expensive and I might actually not end up using it. I'd rather get something that is a little, little uh, 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 cheaper priced that I, I definitely know I'm probably gonna use and I don't need all these fancy features. So I can still do some of the ideas I have uh, with this particular uh, board, this piece of technology. Um, and it's a lot cheaper uh, than going with the Oak D. So we'll briefly cover the specs of this board. As I said, I'm brand new to this uh, computer vision, artificial intelligence world. So comparing these specs to other boards is something that I can't exactly do right now because this is the first board that I've actually purchased uh, for artificial intelligence. So I would love to hear in the comments um, how you think this compares to other boards. If you've done artificial intelligence or computer vision before, I'd love to hear from you about uh, your thoughts on this particular Oak One model um, or even the Oak D. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on that. So the Oak One has a 4K 12 megapixel camera, a Myriad X VPU um, is used as the brains um, for the unit. And this, uh, this VPU can actually perform up to one trillion ops per second, which I hear is quite a phenomenal number. Um, it certainly sounds um, pretty incredible. The power source and the communication port are all in the same uh, USB-C port, so that's cool. It works um, off of the same cable that you have lying around. If you've got, uh, you know, the, the newer Macs or, or the newer iPads that have that USB-C, you've already, you're all set up with that. And some of the Raspberry Pis now have that built in, which is really, really cool. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. So you can obviously interface with um, a whole bunch of devices with this board, with this camera. You can interface with obviously Mac. There's a setup process for Mac, Windows, and the Raspberry Pi, there's this whole intricate system, which I haven't done yet, but I've, I've looked at it and I've seen some of the docs for that. So hopefully uh, my plan is to actually uh, set this up with my Pi. In a future video, I'll show my process for setting that up and what I've done with that. But for now, I've set it up on my Mac, and so I'll kind of walk you through um, some of the things that I've done with my Mac, really just showing you the results of, of what I've done, not really the setup process. There are some fantastic videos out there. If you have the Oak One and you wanna get started with that, definitely go to the um, links in their docs and check that out, because um, there's some fantastic videos that uh, I've been using to, to walk through that process. So when you're coding the Oak One, you are actually gonna write your code in Python, which is pretty cool, right? Because that's what we use a lot of times on the Raspberry Pi, so that works out really well. Python is, I believe, currently the top um, most widely used and most favorited language in the world right now. Um, used to be JavaScript, but I think two years ago, uh, JavaScript was dethroned, moved down, and now Python's at the top of the list. Um, so I've done a little bit of Python development, not a ton, so I'll probably be getting a lot more into the Python world um, while working with this with this Oak One device. So the cool thing about this is the Oak One will work pretty well with the OpenCV Python library, at least from what I've heard. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try and uh, seeing how well they connect or if they connect at all. I've been looking a lot at the OpenCV Python library and there are some crazy, crazy cool things um, with that library. So if you are interested in uh, computer vision, and you've written in Python before, I would highly encourage you to look, out, uh, look up this uh, OpenCV uh, Python library. They do some pretty, pretty fantastic stuff and you don't need um, any OpenCV hardware to actually run the uh, library that they, that they produce. So with the Oak One and the Oak D, there are a ton of super, super cool scripts, uh, demo scripts that came along with the um, repo. So you can actually start those uh, uh, scripts, fire those scripts off within a few minutes after having installed all the dependencies for the, um, the Oak device, whichever one you got. So very, very cool. There are some really, really neat things you can do right off the bat without having to write any code. All their demo scripts have, I think there's, I don't even know how many they have, 20 plus demo scripts. Uh, to choose from that are very similar, but they, they do definitely different things that work for very niche projects, um, uh, very specific projects. So there's a few that I have in mind for future videos um, and for future projects that I'll be working on with the Raspberry Pi. So some of my favorite scripts that I've found so far include the following. So the first is um, an object detection and identification script. 
This script is really, really cool because you can literally fire the script off and within seconds have your uh, OakD identifying objects and actually telling you exactly what that object is um, and it'll also give you an accuracy readout so you, it'll tell you how accurate it thinks it is. So if you point it at a chair or a table, for instance, it might be like 75% sure or 100% sure that it's definitely a chair that it's looking at. So <laughs> kind of cool that it tells you um, how certain or, or, or not so certain it is about the object it's identifying. There's also a human pose detection uh, script that you can run. And so what that does is it looks for key features on the human body so it looks for your shoulders, it'll look for your eyes, eyes, for your mouth, your ears, your nose. Um, it'll even look for your elbows, your hands. And so when you move, it will actually track your movements and, and show that on the, uh, on the screen or in the script. Um, so uh, Oak One or Oak D are both able to pick up on um, human poses and identify where you're moving in physical space, which is very, very cool. There's also an emotion detector feature. So um, you can point the uh, Oak One or Oak D at your, at your face or someone else's face and it will detect um, their emotions. And a lot of that comes from the um, facial detection and the, the pose detection that we were talking about just a second ago. Um, it's tracking the corners of your mouth. It's doing a lot of that stuff to detect um, your eyebrows and all that kind of stuff to see if you're angry, sad, surprised, and happy, I believe are the four emotions um, that I've been able to, to have it uh, identify so far. And there are a whole bunch of other models available, and obviously you can train your own models. Uh, these are just some of the demo scripts that are included in the initial repo uh, when you download that. So without having to write any of the code for these, this is what you get right off the bat. Absolutely incredible stuff, and I'm really looking forward to trying to use this in my projects. Although taking a sneak peek at the uh, code behind the scenes, I'm realizing that I'm gonna have to learn a lot more Python than I know right now to get this to work. So if you can recommend any um, Python tutorials that you personally are a big fan of or that really helped you uh, to learn Python well, send them my way, drop them in the comments. I'm very excited to uh, start uh, delving more into Python. I did a bit of Python when I was like 12 uh, years old, which was eight years ago. So. Um, Python is something that I, I have a little bit of a background in, but I haven't done uh, very much Python work recently. There is a fascinating course um, that is produced by OpenCV for this uh, Oak One and Oak D. So that came with the device, which is really cool that uh, you know was integrated into the Kickstarter package um, that we received for, I think the total that I paid, because I wanted the t-shirt as well, was a little over $100. Um, but the Oak D uh, device itself and the Kickstarter, um, or Oak One rather, was uh, 79 uh, US dollars. Unfortunately, the retail price for this is now 199 US dollars, so almost 200 uh, USD. Um, and that's just because it's obviously not the Kickstarter edition. Um, I'm not sure entirely if there are a whole bunch of other new things that are included in that, but I'm really hoping that future revisions on this technology will cost a little bit less. Obviously right now, this is some pretty crazy cool stuff. Um, so I think it definitely, the price is, is pretty fair for what you get with it, especially if you've done this kind of stuff before. But if you're a beginner just starting to get into it, <laughs> I know $200 for me sounds a, a little outrageous. So moving forward, um, next steps for me are, I'm, I'm very excited to start working on some project ideas that I have in mind, but until I have completed the course and brushed up on my Python skills, I think those projects are just gonna have to wait. So if you have any Python resources I would love, love to see them. So definitely drop them in the comments. I'll definitely be checking those out. Um, and I will also continue going through the OpenCV um, uh, Oak course. So uh, very, very excited to see where that goes. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. Um, I hope some of this was, was interesting. If you'd like to see more of, uh, in regards to the OpenCV Oak, I would definitely be putting up a whole bunch more uh, videos on this particular topic because there's just so much more to talk about. Again, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Very, very helpful. And uh, leave a comment with some of those resources and also what you thought about this video. And we'll see you in the next one.